Hey guys, happy holidays. My name is Callie. Welcome to my channel. Um, this video is in lieu of a disorder that is quite near and dear to my heart, even though it's not often discussed. It is called dermatillomania. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, dermatillomania is the compulsive need or thought process that leads you to pick at your skin. And it can be super embarrassing and is a huge part of my mental illness. And um, my dermatillomania transpires on my face. That's why I'm here in no makeup. You can see all the irritation and open cuts and closed cuts and scarring on my face that has come over time. And my dermatillomania comes out anytime. I mean, anxious social situations, anxious home situations where I'm just stressed out. And I will immediately go to my face and just start picking at it. And it's it can be super, super embarrassing because you can be just sitting at lunch and something stressful occurs or someone tells you something you didn't want to hear and you will immediately go to your area where you do your picking. And uh, sometimes my face bleeds and people will notice and they'll immediately go to get me a tissue or something and I'm just like super embarrassed because there's no reason for my face to be bleeding unless I picked at it. So there's really no explaining that away. And obviously my, my mom noticed it when I was real young and um, my face is mostly where the dermatillomania will occur. But for a long time I had open sores all over my head, um, which that was the largest shame I ever felt from this disorder. I couldn't get a haircut. I was terrified for anyone to touch my head if, in case they should feel the scabs and scars. Um, it was super, just super embarrassing. And I'm blessed, really blessed, that I was able to let them heal up. I wore a hat for a while. Um, and I just couldn't, couldn't go near it. I had to let them heal up. I was starting to get infections. It was, it was bad. And that was a really dark time in my life. So obviously the picking gets worse if you're depressed or anxious all the time, which I was in prior to my most recent lifestyle. I, not lifestyle, life. Um, I mean, you grow up. You grow up, you learn to deal with your depression, you learn to deal with your anxiety, you go out into the world and you start to learn how to deal with yourself. And that took a lot of therapy, a lot of time I mean, getting over a mental illness or learning to live with a mental illness is not easy. And dermatillomania is like a really small part of everything that I have. But it can be just as equally debilitating because I, I take my Instagram pictures, I take my Facebook pictures, and I constantly am afraid if I'm not wearing makeup that people will see the scarring and all of the, all this. So I, so this particular video is going to have a few tips and tricks on how to deal with dermatillomania and for girls I'm going to show you how to fill in your makeup to hide scarring and open sores. Alright, I'll be right back. Thanks. So we are back and I am going to come forward with a few tips that I've learned to deal with my dermatillomania. One is if you're a girl, I'm sorry that if you're a guy, this really won't help you unless you feel like getting acrylics or gel nails. <laughs> so getting acrylics for me, which I don't have right now, I just have my regular nails, which kind of makes the compulsivity kind of hard because they are sharp and they are, I can easily do what I do with them. But when I had the acrylics and I could afford the acrylics, I was not picking. My face was healing up um, because literally the flat square surface of the acrylic can't actually dig in. So that was a huge, huge help for me. It also helps for people that have um, nail biting issues. So that's another thing to keep in mind if you're a compulsive nail biter. Acrylics are a huge lifesaver for this. Um, the other one is if you pick on your head like I did because it is such a... Um, open surface. It's just got so much, um, it's very easy to dig into your head. And if you dig into your head and you have open sores like I did, 
wear a hat for a week. I don't care if you're going to dinner. I don't care where you're going. You have to take care of you. And no matter what anyone says, if it's a baseball cap, it's a wool cap, it's a beanie, I don't care. Just put it on your head and protect yourself because you can get infections from this. Your nails are very, 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 very dirty and you're digging into open sores. And especially if they, I, I know this sounds so gross, but if you lift away your hand after you've picked and your hand actually smells of like, I don't know if you've ever smelt infection, but it, it's a very pungent odor and you're gonna start smelling it immediately. So if you are picking and you start to smell something like that on your hand, you should either A, get it, get it looked at, or B, get some alcohol. I know it's gonna, alcohol or peroxide, take a Q-tip and clean the cuts, but I would recommend seeing a doctor if you smell infection. Um, what else is, what else did I wanna say? Um, biggest thing for me is when I get a scab, like if I fall down or cut my knee or um, mosquito bites. Mosquito bites are my biggest enemy. I actually, for a while there, I had, I was spending a lot of time at camp and my legs were getting eaten alive because I was allowed to wear shorts. So I had mosquito bites all up and down my, um, my shins, my knees, my thighs. And when they would come to a head, I would pick off the top and they would heal over. And I would continue to pick on them. I now have big white circular scars all over my legs. And so recommendations for scabbing and scarring when you get a scab, because if you have dermatillomania, you're not going to leave those scabs alone. No matter who says what, how many times it bleeds, how many times it crusts over, you're really not going to leave it alone. So my recommendation, either A, wear a Band-Aid till it heals, and it's going to heal slower because it's not getting the air ventilation, but you really don't want those scars. And if you can cover them and keep them away from yourself, it's the best thing you can do. Second of all, just like um, another good one, which, I, which it didn't work for me, but it has worked for many other people, is to wear a rubber band or um, hair tie around your wrist or some kind of, um, there's also worry beads. I don't know if that might help, but if you notice yourself picking, you literally take the hair tie and you pull it back and snap it. It works with, um, I've heard that it works with cutting. Uh, that's never been one of my issues, but it's like almost um, negative reinforcement. Because you're, you're really dealing with something that can be potentially damaging depending on how bad your, um, your disorder is. So just keep yourself safe. Cover your scabs, maybe get acrylics, um, keep them clean, keep them clean. Like, it's very difficult when they're on your head and if you're one of those people that either pick your back or, and with acne, that's a huge one. When you start to get acne and those open, when the pimples come up and you pick them away, you need to be really, really, really careful. As I said, your nails are terribly dirty. You, you're touching things all day, wash your hands a lot. Wash your hands a lot. Um, you're constantly touching things and you're putting that into your open cuts. So wash your hands a lot. Um, do everything you can to protect your open cuts from yourself. And um, yeah, that's about it. I think that's all the tips and tricks I have to deal with this as far as um, prevention. Um, yeah, so I hope some of that was helpful. The next segment of this video is for people who do pick their face, like their face particularly, like I do. So I'm actually going to apply my makeup and show you how I make all this disappear. Alright, be right back. Makeup section of my Dermatillomania video. I'm sorry I keep looking up because honestly, I'm not very good at pronouncing Dermatillomania. It's not a word I use in common conversations, so... I have it pulled up in a Wikipedia tab. <laughs> so, um, I just want to go into a little bit of why I use the products that I use. I'm going through a rough time in my life where I really can't afford, um, like, Bare Minerals and Urban Decay and all the Sephora brand products, so I make do with what I can, and I look for products that are A, affordable, and B, non-damaging to my skin. So, um, that's why I use the products that I use. I got all of this stuff other than this product right here, which is the 
Bare Minerals Bare Skin in Fair. I think it's Fair. Yeah, I am fair. I am pale. So that's that's the one product that I kept from when I had um, a little bit more money. And it lasted a really long time because you really don't need much of this. Um, the first product that I apply is my primer. So that's the, uh, I'm trying to get the glare off it, but it's so shiny. It's the e.l.f. Hydrating Face Primer. This is really good. Um, it makes your makeup go on really, really smooth. And um, it's non-irritating, which is great. And it's not, it feels oily on your fingers, but once it actually dries or sinks into your pores, it's not oily. It's just soft. So I, I really recommend this, this product. Um, whoo, I'll get that later. So the next, my foundation that I'm using right now, I actually bought it for my sister for Christmas. We'll see how she likes it. Um, because I actually really like it. It's the Infallible L'Oreal Pro Matte. It's a, it's a full coverage foundation. Comes out kind of thick, but it goes on really, really smooth, especially if you do it with a brush. I'm not a big fan of applying with a beauty blender because honestly, I know you're supposed to clean them. I don't believe they're very clean, honestly. I think they soak up a lot of the makeup and I just, I, I, the whole thing just doesn't seem cleanly to me. I don't know. Maybe it's the wrong opinion. I know you're supposed to clean them. I just, I would rather get one, use it a couple of times and throw it away which kind of seems wasteful to me. So I just use my brushes, clean them, and get a new one every, I think I get a new one every month, maybe every couple weeks. So um, this is my brush set, my current brush set, my brushes. And that is that. Um, the other piece, I look like a cockatoo. Um, the other piece, <laughs> that I want to show today. It's, it has nothing to do really with um, covering. It's actually just a product that I, I just got this and it was a, it was a gift, an early Christmas gift. And um, it's the Smashbox uh, highlighter. So I'm going to use it and um, I actually haven't used it much. I really, I'm trying to learn how to contour. I've been watching a bunch of makeup tutorials and I've also been trying to learn how to highlight. So we'll see how this comes out. I haven't really used it yet. So those are the products that I'm going to be using and I'm going to show you how to apply to smooth your face out and cover everything. Just cover it. Yeah. So guys, this is the end result of basically what I look like with, make with a full face of makeup. This is the cover up that you saw me do. A little bit of eyeliner some mascara, and just some lipstick. Living with a disorder of any kind, anxiety, depression, borderline personality disorder, or bipolar can be really difficult. And dealing with skin picking and nervous disorders and compulsive disorders, even ADD, it can all be really difficult and challenging. But no matter what, if you keep hoping and you keep putting work into yourself and keep telling yourself everything's going to be okay, everything will be okay. So uh, I hope, I really hope all these tips and tricks helped you and I, that you like my daily makeup. And just remember, tomorrow's another day and this too shall pass. So keep kicking it. Bye. Let's get started with the actual applying of the makeup to cover scarring, sores, and um, acne, which I have all three of. So when I apply my makeup, I always recommend that you wash your hands and wash the surface of your face. So I've already done both of that. So I'm just going to take a brush. I just got bangs, so I'm really not used to them, but I always put my hair up and out of my face and clear the surface of my skin. So let's get started. We're going to take our primer and we're going to just take our hand, let me pan this down a little bit. We're going to take our hand just like that. One squeeze. You can do, you can do two squeezes depending on how you like your primer. Take like this, one drop on each hand and just Apply. It goes on really, really, really smooth. 
and under your eyes, on your nose, all in there, especially in here. Yeah, we're going to do two drops today because you really want to apply that. So then you're going to go back, take a really little squeeze, pat that like that on your two fingers, put one up here, put one here, and one over the eyes and circle around. Make sure not to get it in your eyes. That, that, that seems pretty obvious, but <laughs> my dad always said, common sense is a great gift and not everybody has it. Not saying you, just in general. So really rub that into your skin all around. All right, so that's done. You can already tell your skin looks a little less irritated because it's being soothed. And we're going to go on to the next step. All right, so we're going to take this, our bare skin, and this is just your daily makeup. You know, you're going out, you're going to the grocery store. I don't know, whatever you feel like doing today. So you're going to take that out. Make sure you really kind of twist it around, scoop up all, everything that's in there. Mine's running out. So now hard or easy part. I'm not used to working with this camera. So we're going to go like that. Go like that. I'm sorry, I'm not used to this camera. I'm used to doing it in a mirror, so everything's backwards. All right. So really just focus on the areas of which are irritated and just fill them in. Like that. Like. Now we're going to go in here. I like to do all around my lips with this because there's a lot of irritation and oil there. I mean, you eat there. Think about it. All right. So as you can see, I have a lot of irritation in my skin. So. I am so sorry that I didn't practice this before, but I'll get the hang of it. Hope I'm not irritating you. Oh God, look at the side of my face. Ugh. Okay. So. Literally, just go and fill in all the irritated parts. Okay. Okay. Now, everything's like filled in. Okay, no. struggling but you'll get the hint now going to go under your nose oh look at that there feel like I'm so my recommend my true recommendation look looking like this I'm gonna tell you don't if you're just sitting home or you're going out with friends that don't care what you look like or you don't have to put makeup on, don't let your skin heal. Just get a really good lotion, like um something non-irritating, something that's for your face that's moisturizing and just rock it without putting on 
makeup because you need to give your time. Makeup just covers everything and doesn't allow it to heal, honestly. So if you can go a couple days without makeup, letting yourself heal, that would be great. Now, anything else? Bah. Got one right there. And we got some right here. there. We can bring it down. Okay. Now, honestly, my eyebrows look terrible. Let's do that. There. So you've liter literally covered everything. Now, we're going to choose from our brushes. Oh, there goes one. This is actually one of my favorites. It's from Sephora. I've been using it a lot. And there goes my highlighter brush. Um, so for today, let me think. We'll use this one. It's a fine tipped, just make sure it's clean, not giving off any powder. And we're gonna go in and we're just literally, you pick an area to start, you're just gonna, like this, fill in the holes. Just lightly brush it in, you know? Just fill it in, lightly. And because honestly with this, you're just making your skin uneven. You show like a little dabby, like you're an artist, you know? Little dabby strokes to fill in those holes. Little quick dabby. Almost like you're using a beauty blender, but not quite because you're going in circles. Already, uh, you can see a difference and we haven't put the foundation on yet. Go back up here. I'm getting better at this. Okay, so blending. So now we're gonna come over here and just do the same thing. I'm really not getting this left to right mirror thing, but I will by the time this is over. And then if I ever choose to do another makeup tutorial, I will be much better at it. Uh, see? Alright. Already looking better. Now we're going to come in. See? So much less irritated, a lot smoother. Now we're going to come in over here. See this big bump? This big bump right here? We're going to smooth that out by just circly, dabby, motions like so. Go all the way into the eye over here and smooth. Barely there. I'm gonna just okay. Covering. Oh sorry. Facebook. Okay. Oh my screen's dying. All right, we're dabbing, we're looking a lot better now. All right, we're dabbing, we're not really brushing, but you see this big irritated bump on the side of my face? We're gonna cover that. Dabbing, okay, now bringing it down to the nose. We're all blended throughout here. Now we're gonna go to the, 
this area, the forehead, blending into the brow, blending up into the brow. We're gonna, and make sure to lift your hairline because you want it to be blended all the way up. You don't want, honestly, the reason for makeup is to pretend like you're not wearing it. Unless you're going to the club and booty shaking. Then, feel free to glob it on. So, this has evened our skin out. Pull back. Your brows look all wacky. Okay. Okay, so that's just the first step. What is that? Okay. You can even go back in. Now, we're gonna do a little brush over. I have this big, silky, fluffy brush. We're just gonna gently gloss over, evening it out, letting it fall into the creases of your skin and all those bumps. All right, great. Now, we're just gonna take this, this right here. We're gonna apply to our brush, this brush. We're gonna use a soft-edged, middle-sized brush. We're gonna just take it like that and like that. Now we're gonna apply. This is pretty simple. This is just a basic apply. You dab with the two dots dab with the two dots and you brush it on. This will take care of any redness. See the difference there? All the redness. Oop. All the redness. All the redness. Okay. Okay, so now we apply as much as you think you need and just brush it on. Now, make sure to apply under the under eye because we all know we look tired after a long day. And go in like quick motions, add as much as you really think you need. But make sure you're pressing into those cuts and filling them. And you can go put as much pressure and force as you want. I use a lot to even it up. Now we're gonna go on the nose. Of the tip. Under the eye. And then we're gonna come back, apply that. Make sure the hair is still out of the way. so we can get the forehead. I do a lot of my picking on my forehead. Let's be honest now, it's a big open space. Big glob right there. I'm just gonna smooth it over and lightly feather dust, but with a healthy dose of pressure. Make sure you're blending all the way out. Now, we're gonna go back to our like little skinny brush. Just put a little dab like that. Come in over the eye. I mean, we put primer on there for a reason. We want that to be nice and smooth if you're gonna put on eyeshadow. In and down. Repeat with the other eye. Oh, this is why I should go by sense, not by this backwards world I'm living in right now. And over, under, over the brow, back over the brow. 
There we go. There we go. Now, would you ever assume that I had troubled skin? Of course you can still see a bit of the acne, but would you ever believe that I had all those open cuts? I don't, like, honestly, I wouldn't assume I had all those open cuts, even though I know I do. There we go. Now to finish off our everyday look, I'm just going to go over the foundation with our concealer. Make sure you get a good amount on there, because honestly, all your tiredness is in your eyes, and my cap just broke, which shows how long I've had this. So, go right in there. You can even just go along there, there. And if you still see a little bit of redness, feel free. Just look like that. Like that. Go like that, and like that, and like that, and over. Because honestly, you know what I lied? I don't do this when I go to the grocery store. But I do, if I'm going on a date, apply this much. Because honestly, who hasn't lied on the first date? Okay, as for the eyes, honestly, I like to smooth that by hand because I feel that it goes on a little bit smoother. And just go around, rubbing in, pressing it into your cuts and pores and scars and everything. Now, I look like a ghost right now. This is the portion of how to cover. Now I'm just going to do a, I'm going to cut here and do a short segment about how I do my eye makeup because honestly I can't stand myself looking like Casper right now. But I also don't want to keep rambling. So this is how I cover my face by shoving, basically shoving foundation into the actual damage. So that's that. So guys, this is the end result of basically what I look like with me with a full face of makeup. This is the cover up that you saw me do. A little bit of eyeliner, some mascara, and just some lipstick. Living with a disorder of any kind, anxiety, depression, borderline personality disorder, or bipolar can be really difficult. And dealing with skin picking and nervous disorders and compulsive disorders, even ADD, it can all be really difficult and challenging. But no matter what, if you keep hoping and you keep putting work into yourself and keep telling yourself everything's going to be okay, Everything will be okay. So I uh, hope, I really hope all these tips and tricks helped you and I, that you like my daily makeup. And just remember, tomorrow's another day and this too shall pass. So keep kicking it. Bye.